Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Mondays with Mindy. Christian Brescia, season three, episode one. Season three. <laughs> yes. I know. Good to have back. Even bigger news, Christian. Yes. Mondays with Mindy, season three, has a sponsor. In fact, two sponsors, which is o- amazing. Officially, like proper official officially. sponsors. Yes. We are proud to announce that season three is sponsored by the cocktail party, Love Mary, which is this most deliciosa homemade hors d'oeuvres that you can get sent right to your door from the most incredible caterer to the stars and beyond, Mary Giuliani. Uh, And also one of my most favorite hotels in the whole wide world that happens to be in Woodstock, New York, the Woodstock Way Hotel. So... Officially. Oh, my God. We're so official. We have a sponsor. (laughs) Anyway, we thank them. We thank you for joining us. Today's episode features a conversation with an actress I've known for a long time. Um, Just a minute. Just a minute. (laughs) Almost my whole life. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was a co-star with her for a decade on a show that some of you may know called The Facts of Life. <laughs> anyway, today's conversation is going to be with the amazing Nancy McKean. Nancy was born and raised in New York and began her career as a child model along with her brother, Philip McKean, who would later co-star in a long-running series, Alice, with Linda Lavin. <laughs> um, anyway, Nancy was doing numerous, numerous commercials. In fact, I first saw Nancy... Uh, in a Hallmark commercial that to this day is one of the most sentimental, gorgeous ads I've ever seen. And when Phil booked Alice, the whole family moved out to Los Angeles. And uh, actually, Nancy's Hallmark commercial led her to be seen by the casting director of The Facts of Life. And she joined us in 1980 for the show's second season. And then, you know, for the next nine years. Um, (laughs) um, During the 1980s and the 1990s, Uh, Nancy also starred in numerous TV movies, including A Cry for Help, The Tracy Thurman Story, and Strange Voices. And when Facts of Life ended, Nancy starred in a couple of uh, other series, including Can't Hurry Love, Style and Substance, and of course, Lifetime's The Division, where they incorporated her first pregnancy into the storyline of that last season. (laughs) Nancy also started directing during this time and was at the helm for a couple of episodes of The Division as well as her own short film, An Awakening, which she also wrote. Wow. Uh, In 2009, uh, she appeared in a reoccurring role in the Disney show, Sunny with a Chance, playing Demi Lovato's mother. How cool is that? (laughs) It's amazing. So amazing. And in 2018, she competed on season 27 of Dancing with the Stars. Wow. Next up for Nancy will be a reoccurring role in the new Amazon series, Panic, based on the young adult drama series from writer Lauren Olivier. She's working with a dear friend of mine, Bonnie Bedelia. I did my first feature film with Bonnie Bedelia, The Boy Who Could Fly. So wow, there's good luck. There's good luck working with Bonnie Bedelia. Yeah, and I'm that's thrilled good for Nancy. Yeah. That's As good. her girls are getting older, she is getting back on television, on streaming channels, back where she belongs. So I'm very excited. That's excellent. Uh, Nancy lives in Texas with her husband, Mark, and her two daughters. Christian, yippee. I'm very excited (laughs) for this conversation. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring her into the show. Nancy McKeon. Hi. Hi. So happy to be here. Oh my gosh. We're so happy to have you and just to see your face, Nance. I haven't, I haven't, we haven't talked, talked. I mean, we do, we text and stuff. That's the thing about texting is you feel like you've been in touch. Yeah. But, you know, missing that, you know, just kind of spontaneous conversation because my thumbs, these kids today, how they walk (laughs) and thumb thing, I don't even know how to do that. Um, Yeah. I I can't type and I I can't text. So, (laughs) yeah, Um, not a multitasker myself in that department. So, um, Anyway, welcome to Mondays with Mindy. We do this cheeky thing where we just slip into our Jonathan Adler secrets jar and Christian and I have come up with just like random 20 questions and uh, we'll just start from there. You just answer the questions. It's no, okay. it's so easy. It's, it's a little I think get to know you. That's way to get started. All. Mildly yeah. terrifying, but okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, no. There's no wrong answers, yes. no wrong answers. Okay. Oh, yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, not like Sense when we yourself. were kiddos, nowadays True. they don't go away. <laughs> yeah, forever you. and ever. 
No, so we'll, <laughs> we'll just be thoughtful. Nancy, what's your guilty pleasure? What is my guilty pleasure? I would say BritBox. Oh, I, think oh. I, am, a, I am a strange junkie for British television, all things British television. Yeah, <laughs> Ditto. I like that too. Yeah. When I'm just, you know, when I need, uh, I need uh, friends or comfort as far as, you know, when you put it on the screen for yourself, it's, yeah. uh, it's one of a few British comedies. And so, yeah, I would have to huh. say yeah. BritBox. That's a oh, good one. excellent. And the thing I mean, is, not that I'm is, judging. No, no, now, <laughs> now that now I didn't have anything, you know, we lived on a ranch for 18 years where, I mean, you couldn't, it, we had no internet basically, couldn't stream a thing. I mean, we're really? lucky that the phone worked. So <laughs> we just recently this year, also FYI, don't move during a pandemic. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we sold the ranch and we moved and now we have this oh my gosh everything these <laughs> smart amenities TV, these, and it's just i i have to actually say get up and do something walk away from the mini <laughs> channels oh yeah no it's uh -huh. the vortex of tell especially now yeah yes. especially now okay um so i know this to be true it says can you cook i know this to be true that nancy can cook up a storm. Aww. What is your favorite dish to make? Ooh, hmm. What is my favorite dish? Well, I have, and they are well worn. Every <laughs> Ina Garten book ever, oh. probably in triplicate, because Ina is my jam. I love her. I want. Yeah, to what's be, not to love? Yeah. I want to be best friends with Ina, and <laughs> I want to go on her show. It's a dream. I'm working. I'm. I'm sending out my positive. Oh, uh, uh, we I may will, have I a little. With Ina. We may have a little angel that can help you. Yeah. <gasps> oh yeah. We'll <laughs> talk later. Like we might have an angel that can make that happen. That it's make a wish. Did you know that, Christian? <laughs> it's make a wish for Nancy. Um, this episode. I we may be able to that. facilitate that. Yeah. Okay, and I've got cash. So <laughs> anything that you can do. Oh my God, really? I know. Isn't that yeah. sad? I am. I am. I am. No, I get Anna it. Freak. Um, I get it. So one of her dishes is actually my mom's favorite that I make all the time, which is this um, chicken milanese with um, <sighs> arugula mm. and a little shaved parm. It's really simple, but it's light and it's got in lemon and it just is delicious. Delish. So that's one. And it, that I make. That's a good holiday dish, too. It is. Yeah. yeah. OK. Uh, oh, I'm curious. Nancy, what assumption do people make about you that's wrong? You know what this is. I do? <laughs> so you, of course you do. <laughs> that I know anything at all about a motorcycle or cars <laughs> or anything. <laughs> oh my God, I love you so much. Yes. You know it's true. I don't. It's so true. That's funny. <laughs> I know nothing. And they would laugh at me because I would basically, you know, get a screwdriver and clank about in the scene. Like I knew, like I was fixing something. I was just hitting things. I know nothing. I know oh, nothing. You're That's an actress. That's true. Like slightly terrify me because I've, I've, I've wrecked twice. And one during a shoot, I was writing it within the, the scene and that, that boy, that didn't, that was not fun. And then another, when I was younger, and so my husband actually happens to have a motorcycle. He has his, his thing, his love <laughs> in the garage. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. So I got on it once and I said, you know, this is just the most awesome thing. <laughs> and now I never have to do that again. So, it's so cool. <laughs> I wanted to ask, Smart. I know that when you did the division, like you rode with the police department, but did you have to do like any, like go to school for the stunt driving or you guys never really had to do that for that show? No, not for that. And driving, okay. I can do. I'm, I love driving. Yeah, you're a great I've driver. I've always loved driving and I can do that all day long. Um, yeah. The only thing we did, we went on ride alongs with detectives and we, we uh, uh, I was at the gun range a lot, you know. Mm. Oh, okay. Stuff like yeah. that. So, Interesting. Um, but not for, we not never did any kind of stunt driving in our thing. And I didn't have to be on a motorcycle. So, yay. Yeah. Even better. Oh, it was a win. <laughs> okay. Um, well, now I, we may have known the answer. What's the last thing you binged on? 
that I binged on. But, yeah. Um, television wise then? Well, it could be anything. Just yeah. however you want to answer it. Uh, wow. It doesn't have to be television. It could be a food I, item. It could be, I don't know. I think it would have to be, what did we? Um, oh, well, of course. It, in you know follow up to what i just said right um, for my third time around um <laughs> there, but my kiddos and my husband's first time we uh did uh uh downton abbey oh and what did they think oh they loved it they loved did it. they love it and of course i loved it again and again Right. So that of was course. good. Actually, and right before that, because did I mention for 18 years we had nothing? Um, yes. We did, uh, Game, know of, that we did out Game there. of Thrones. So, and oh, what'd wow. you think? I thought it's a lot was, of names. It was amazing. And I have to say, I'm really thankful that I didn't have to wait. You know, a year and a half before that next oh, right. ep- that next season would have come yeah. out. You know, yeah. I yeah. Really yeah. got to sort of. So I think the ending didn't strike me as much as it did when when people were watching it in real time because there was such a there were so many gaps. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, it it made a little bit more sense. You know, when you're watching it straight through, but yeah. they are just you know. First off, can we just say Kit Harrington? Um. Amazing. I mean, I mean. Um, but the whole cast, I mean, st- yes, stellar from from stem to stern, the extras, yeah. the de- I mean, the extras, the devotion that you have to have, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's just, that's another level. That that's, was a whole other level. Yeah, yeah I think gotta I be would fans not too, eat like... that week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to say it took about season two and a half by the time I finally learned everybody's name. So that's <laughs> yes, but that you know, was the only p- waiting for anything Peter Dinklage to come on and uh, be just extraordinarily brilliant. Yeah. I mean, yes. you're just you're just waiting for him to 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 do what he does, and so those are our two binges. Agreed. Oh, those and, are and goodies. Kind of like polar opposites in some ways. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. but I love totally. that. I Especially love that. Game of Thrones with the with my. 14 year old it was a little spicy yeah but i was gonna okay. say how really spicy it was so, yeah, <laughs> yeah and violent sad. and yeah. violent a little bit, a little bit. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> at times it's sort of like oops okay well we're on a learning curve okay um last question if you could i mean not forever but just oh. like this thing um this is if, so fast. This is fast. <laughs> the lightning round <laughs> and we're done yeah um if you could have dinner with any three people who would they be and why? And I know this is one of those questions. It's like, are you kidding me? But just like in this moment right now with us. Living, dead, would- imaginary, anything. Imaginary. <laughs> Gosh. Um, gee, that's a hard one because I, I can go, I could go uh, current and funny, <laughs> but. Oh, it just hit me. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, so, funny and current and yeah. That would be, but no, if I, was, about that. Answer, if I was to answer you truthfully, I, yeah. it, it, it would be, um, it would be my mom's parents, my grandma and grandpa and, and uh, my brother. And so, so yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay. That would be amazing. All right. Uh, so didn't, yep. A little late to that. Sorry about that, kiddo. Oh, no, we're good. Um, yeah, we didn't want to cry at the first 10 minutes. Oh, I know. Okay. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> Well, leave Barbara, it to Mindy. Is, Barbara is the new Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave it to me to just poop on something. Okay, whoopsie. Uh, 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 anyway, that's lovely and gorgeous and yes. Beautiful, yeah. Okay, um, so I don't know if you are aware of why Christian and I started this, but I was sort of, um, well, that first March, April, May of last year wasn't, you know, I'm kind of a loner. Uh, and, and as long as we had clean air and clean water and food, you know, I was kind of okay. Yeah. Um, but the only thing that I was missing were my friends and my community and just talking to other creatives. And Christian said, let's do a podcast. Why not? Everyone else is doing one, it seems. <laughs> but um, kind of this was born out of that, of just us wanting to connect to people that we think about, we care about, we've had pasts with. Mm -hmm. whatever. So it really is kind of talking about people's creative process, whatever that means to them. 
And right. it doesn't necessarily have to be about like the work. Um, but in general, I have to say that um, after Kim Fields teaching me upstage and downstage <laughs> the first season, <laughs> my yeah. second acting lesson came from you. I don't know if you know this or not, or, or you remember, because it was Jesus so long ago. A little while ago. But for some <laughs> stupid reason, uh, the writers wrote an episode too early, in my humble opinion, for this person that Natalie gets attacked mm -hmm. and uh, I have to enter already having gone through something. And, right. you know, I'm 13 years old, just got bat mitzvah and discovered. So, you know, I know <laughs> nothing from this. And Christian, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Nancy literally talked me through that. Hmm. And I remember getting all of these kudos and pats on the shoulder of wow, didn't know you had it in you. And wow, this was so impressive. And it really had to do with Nancy. My first acting lesson was you just telling me, put yourself in that situation. I mean, it was like a master's class yeah. <laughs> while we were 14 years old. <laughs> I, I, you're a sweetheart. A, you remember that? No, I, you I don't. Remember, I remember. Um, here's the thing. Two things that struck me. First off, I don't see you as a loner. I see you as fiercely independent um, but you have always been um, a person who uh, has just, you know, uh, almost a party around you. Wherever you go, there's laughter and kindness. And, 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 uh, and so I, that's different than being a loner, you know, because, you know, I, you didn't, you, you just, you bring a zest to something. And sometimes people need to to regroup and replenish because when you go out and you are a people person because you right. are you're but a, I am an introvert which is ironic to a lot of people but I think we all kind of are I mean mm -hmm. people don't really realize mm -hmm. that about actors maybe Be, you know they think oh well you get up there and do that well we get up there and do that as somebody else we yeah. don't right. get up there and do that as as us right. you know and you go out and do that and you put all this energy and everything that you have into it. And then you go back to you and home and you need to replenish. So that's, that's just the yin and the, the yang of it. And so to that point, you know, and I love you for saying that, but there's nothing that you did or that came out of you that wasn't there. It's just accessibility. And when you have great comedic timing, when you have, uh, what Charlotte saw in you and Norman and all of these amazing uh, creatives that were, you know, that we all looked up to and that we were mm -hmm. blessed to be around, um, you know, they don't see just one side of you. They see talent. It's, it's the whole. Yeah. And yes, ours was primarily what a great job to find the, the funniest way to go through something most of the mm -hmm. time. Um, they also allowed us that flip side to really, you know, have some emotion. And it, it was just, it, it wasn't anything more than you and I having conversation. There was no teaching or anything. You and I were having conversation about what would this feel like? And then you went out there and you did it. This, this is everything to do with the flip side of your comedic talent. And so that was just you. And well, be, Christian, think, what she's not, what you're not saying, well, Nancy. supported by us as we all Very do much so. Right. Very so, much so. I mean, you, I was you are on your own and that helps. Yes. As we all felt that throughout every season, no True. matter what happened, no matter what the day was bringing, no matter what <laughs> personal true. thing was going on in our, our various lives, no matter mm -hmm. what happened, when we got out there as a team and as a unit, I, I never felt I, it was so supportive and so, and secure yeah. funny for, for, you know, young women of that time, but it, there was never a moment where we didn't feel like we had each other's back it, it, yeah. within the concept of being those, those kiddos and those people yeah. or as us, even, even in the rehearsal process, when someone was mm -hmm. struggling or someone, you know, yeah. we're all there for each other yeah. all the time. 
it's, that's I mean, true. it translated true. to television too, because I was a, I was a viewer. I mean, I was a little bit younger, but my older sister was a huge fan of the show. She watched it religiously every time it was on. And so by nature, I kind of sat and watched it too, but you definitely felt that camaraderie around it. And I certainly, I mean, I've always been raised with strong female um, role models. And so that was just another extension to me visually of that. So I'm not surprised to hear this kind of behind the scenes story because that's what it looked like on TV. And, you know, you guys did seem like a really supportive team kind of learning and well, growing also, together. You know, I always talk about, I really, I really talk about Norman a lot because one of the reasons that this was his last show, I mean, he's sort of like going on to do other things after creating this for Charlotte, kind of promising her, uh, really, uh, was that, you know, he had girls our age our ages and like he did with Edith Bunker that was modeled after his wife, Francis, Mm -hmm. he, he said, I didn't see my girls on television. I didn't see my age group and the conversations we were having around the dinner table. I didn't see that. So I really appreciated that. And also the thing that he told me was this is what you do, not who you are, you know? And I think we all shared that. I think that's why just professionally, there's never been a time or a need for any of us to talk smack because there's no smack there. Because right. we all, it was our job, right? Like- well, it was our job, but I think, you know, look, I mean, it, it, you know, we can put a really beautiful sugar coating on, on it. You know, the fact of the matter is, is we were, we went through our formative years together and it, we were, <laughs> but I, I always think of it as we, we truly were sisters when we, when we, write that or we say that a we were and became that and b you know in my heart we still are i know Mm -hmm. that i you know obviously it's been a very difficult time the first people to have my back were Mm -hmm. my sisters you know Mm -hmm. and to that end sisters you know get you know og or get you Uh know they, they get different interests and are maybe thinking about this and, you know, and you have to say, Hey, yeah. come on, come on, come on. We've got to, you know, but that's normal. That is a, a normal thing. And, but, you know, I have to say how grateful, what a, um, what a, an amazing team that I actually was able to come into. They were all together before me and mm-hmm. they had already made this beautiful thing and started this out they brought, they accepted me in. And I, I felt that from day one, they were, they were kind of rooting for me. And that was, that was everything because I had never done comedy. I had never Mm -hmm. done a half hour. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you say I'd never done that, I was kind of in the same boat because I'd never done that format. I was an extra um, and I had two lines once on, on Alice on my brother's <laughs> show, but I yeah. think, I think I was the shoe in for that. <laughs> you know, I was like, I had to work hard to get that role or uh, a little nepotism never hurts anybody. Uh. You know, they would allow me to, to sit at the counter sometimes in the diner and Aww. the wonderful prop guy would make me a milkshake and Aww. cause I wasn't getting any work. My brother, we came out there my brother had this show yeah. for whatever reason I could not get a job and which must have been really frustrating because you were pretty prolific back in New York I mean you so much in New York and I thought okay you know my brother's got this great job and I'll you know I would love to you know continue it's what I love to do and you know boy how silence is deafening I mean it was yeah (laughs) I'm laughing it's horrible yeah well you made up for it I thought oh my god I'm just that bad. I so oh, God, no. have to find a, 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 some something to do in life because mm-hmm. no one w- would give me a job. And it wasn't yeah. until it, it wasn't until uh, Aaron Spelling, uh, you know, and I, my first job mm-hmm. was um, uh, Fan- uh, Starsky and Hutch and then Fantasy Island. Yep. And, and they they were very good. That company well, was very good about they loved you yeah, moving yeah. you into their different shows and it thank god because otherwise i don't know i don't know where i'd be i wouldn't be talking yeah. to you here i know I'd people be that's so weird asking if i could talk to you <laughs> oh, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well something i've always kind of um debunked when asked is this sort of sense of um 
early on, and this is very early on when you people would ask me, well, you know, Nancy, she could just cry on cue. And I would always say, no, no, that's not what's happening. If you were there in person and watching it, no, it's actually like in she's in the scene like that's called acting. Oh, um, yeah. And I always kind of resented that you never did, which really pissed me off. So I just got <laughs> pissed for you. Um, but I, I really did. I took up that banner very early on in See, interviews. That's what sisters do. <laughs> it really upset me. I'm like, you don't understand what happens. You're not watching it closely. I always resented that. So um, in saying that is your I mean, God, could you have a process at 14 or 15? I don't know. But do you approach work in the same way now or? Um, no, because back then um, I was uh, just blessed and privileged enough to, to get this amazing job. Uh, what a gift. And I, I always... I always worked hard as hard as I knew how to, but mm-hmm. funnily enough, it would, no, I'd, I would never been trained or, you know, mm-hmm. anything in, in that matter. It wasn't until um, after the show was over that I sought out uh, some, uh, some classes because uh, I thought, you know, you instinct and luck is, is only going to get you so far, but you yeah. need to learn what, yeah. what, how to move this forward, you know, and to, to, you know, as we do. And most people, when they come to the set, they're, they're usually either, they get bored very quickly or they're amazed <laughs> about the repetition of it. Yeah. Yeah. Having to do it over and over. And especially, um, um, you know, if you're doing a, a, a one hour, you know, mm-hmm. or a film where it is intense, you know, you have to bring that same intensity when you're off camera for that actor and that actor and that actor and that, right. you know, and so, and it can go on for all day, two days. Right. And so how does one accomplish that? How do you, mm-hmm. how do you facilitate that? There have to be tools in the toolbox. Right. And so, Truly, it wasn't under. It wasn't after until after our show ended that I I, I went and sought out some tools because, you know, no, same it's necessary. Same, yeah. but I I will say though the couple of TV movies that you did during because I know you did other things after, but during Facts of Life years, I mean, <clears throat> you did research. You didn't just show up to those sets. No, I know that. No, because I can see to learn. it. Yeah, I loved learning and I right. loved, and, and we happened at that point, the show was doing so well, and, you know, so we, we had opportunity. Yeah. And so I thought, well, if someone's going to give me this opportunity, the best thing I can do is make sure that we have great people. Mm-hmm. I'm allowed in the room, so I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to listen to everything that these great people say and learn what it is that I'm doing and be grateful for the opportunity. But, you know, when you're at 15, 16 and we're doing what we're doing, me having director approval, really? What? I, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. But, that was given. And so my thing was, OK, you know, ask my counsel and ask the people I trust and who's the best mm-hmm. director. Let's try and get them and then just right. be quiet and learn because the, truly, you know, that is the master class is when you are given the opportunity to be, you know, in a scene or on a stage or in a room with people who are great at what they do. Mm-hmm. One of my first movies, um, it was before our show. Uh, I got the opportunity to do, a, it was kind of a groundbreaking movie at the, in its time. Um, uh, with Jane Alexander and Jenna Rowland. That's right. Oh my God, holy Pete. It was called A Question of Love. And it was about, you know, uh, you know, they were a couple and wanting to adopt, you know. Yes. And, and this was pre our show, you know, <laughs> right. so very early. And uh, it, it, you know, it was, it was a lot. And, but yeah. you, even at that age, I knew, oh, yeah. I didn't know who, really who they were because I was yeah. I was uh, 11 or 12 you knew you were in the presence of something amazing no oh, I, I got to be in a scene and I got to stand and watch these incredible women 
And I'm, you know, all, I hope you, you just got to hope that somehow things are, are sinking in, <laughs> even if you don't know really what's sinking in, you know, but watching yeah. people, how they treat people, how mm-hmm. they carry themselves, how they, you know, how yes. kind they are, you know, all of these things inform you as you move forward. And, and when you're just privileged and blessed and lucky enough to be able to work with, uh, you know, the kinds of folks that I've, I've been amazed. I get the opportunity to do this with uh, yourself uh, up there at the top. You know, what a great, um, uh, gosh, I I don't know how you'd be more grateful, you know? Yeah. No, I feel the same way. I I really do. And, you know, I mean, for me as actors, I mean, I know you direct and you write as well and, and do all kinds of things that I just don't. I'm a producer, of course, because I'm bossy pants um, and I like to people please. So it's like, that's all you need. Um, and I can ask for everyone else and not myself. Producer, <laughs> made, done. But, uh, you know, as an actor, all I have is my talent and my reputation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's so interesting how that reputation carries through because people that's when people want to work with you again. You know, you may yeah. get lucky the first time or twist of fates or whatever it is, or God just goes, yeah, OK, today, hit it, kid, you know, but the reputation is what gets you through. And I do have to say, I wear it as a badge of honor um, that we kind of came out of our 10 year run, you know, really with great reputations that we earned, you know, that were true. Yeah. We all worked hard. We all, we, you know, we all loved working. It was so fun. And when we hit a rhythm, you know, there are some, some rhythms that I will never forget that still to this day, when I think about, I just feel happy and joyful and grateful you know the paint scene of course you know i mean when we yeah. hit rhythms with the where it was we were flying you know yeah it, it, always always seen where your your lightning bolts hat oh know, dear god half wattage here people yes. i swear to god i i you know if i need a laugh <laughs> I think about it and you make it <laughs> all the time it's so it was it's so cool and i i'm i hope that's what what people think i hope they realize that you know because we it was no there was no social media we weren't doing anything thank god God. oh my gosh nancy (laughs) do you know do you know on my knees thinking that there was no social media then i would have i I don't know if i'd be here i think i'd be either in prison on a chain gang uh, you know, with the earrings all up my, I don't know what I would be, but it would not be here talking to you guys. Let me just tell you oh, that. I'm I so always grateful. I'd be on the post office wall. <laughs> some, sort of, <laughs> some sort of monetary reward. <laughs> would not. Oh my hurt. God. That is so hate. So uh, in doing my research about you, um, I came across something that I didn't know that I was never aware of. Talk to me about when you wrote and you directed a short filmed awakening. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, when did that happen and how did I miss it? Well, I think for me, that was, um, uh, gosh, cause you guys were all super smart and, you know, Kimmy went to Pepperdine and, and uh, you went to college too. You went to, where did you? I did. Yeah. I did. I went to Loyola Marymount and then I got a master's of education. Yeah. (laughs) Listen, yeah, I have very right. smart parents. I have, oh I have very God. smart parents. I had to I had to get up there with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so don't have any of that. Um, but I <laughs> I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take what would have been um, I guess my college tuition and mm-hmm. I'm gonna make this short. Yeah. And so I I did that and I had some help from some from a lot of great people and went back to New York and, and, you know, kind of just, I thought, you know what, I just want to dive in. I just want to just jump deep end and, and, and you had, and also then taking myself also out of Los Angeles where we had more of the people around us that we, you know, to go to for, if you need an editing room or if you need, you know, something, you know, I was literally, uh, I remember driving, uh, I had to go rent a big white passenger van (laughs) And if you <laughs> yeah. In New York City, hmm, passenger van, not really where to start, but okay. Um, so I, love I remember it. driving and and uh, had to go. Uh, uh, Chapman was going to lend me a little Pee Wee dolly, so I, but I had to pick oh. it up. 
you know, and then I remember we were so small, we didn't really have to, um, it wasn't really about a, a teamster thing, you know, but okay. you pay your respect. These are people who, you know, yeah. they're living and stuff. So, you know, I had to cruise by there and, you know, I thought a bottle of scotch <laughs> might just say, you know, thanks so much for letting us do our job, our, our little small thing, you know? And so you just ended up, I am just doing everything. And yeah. it was a great experience as, as a whole. It was a great experience. Um, well, I know you, I mean, you've direct, you directed a few episodes of The Division. I did. Um, I, did. That's I mean, do you, my, that's where I got my card. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have aspirations to like do that more you know, and Moss would, or? Yes, of course I would. I would, I, I love I love being in that position. I love, um, I think being able to craft the story from sort of every angle, you know, okay, mm -hmm. you know. No, I don't. It's a skill you have that I do not well, and I don't wish to have. Crafting the story from every angle. But oh. the great thing is, is being in a position of hiring amazing mm. people and then letting them yeah. do their jobs, letting yeah. them fly, letting them be amazing yeah. and, and do what they do, you know, whether it's a steady cam operator or, you know, the costumes or set design, you have input and you have great conversation. But if you're hiring somebody, you got to know that they're great at what they do. And it's that, mm -hmm. that crazy thing. And you will know this because you understand where Everybody, you have these big production meetings, right? And then everybody goes off and then they, somebody hands you a piece of paper or now they email you and say, okay, seven o'clock, be here, do that and whatever. And you show up and magically this department yeah. shows up and this department shows up and this day. Yeah. And all of a sudden this, this just exquisite collaborative art somehow yeah. magically starts up you know you yeah. drive and you see your little traveling circus in the tents and it's <laughs> yeah. you're four in the morning and it's dark and so you're so silly. happy to see your people you know yeah circus folks because they're yeah. you know, all the tents that are up and everything and it's just <laughs> it's so it's it's just so, so much fun to be able to to craft a story from that angle mm -hmm. as opposed to craft just your portion of the play yeah you know? You have to you have to know what you're doing and then bring that and then be open yeah. to what the whole is. But right. being in that other position is just is so fun. You know, yeah. the thing is I had um, and you know this, you know, I'm 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 kind of a, a, a late starter, you know, <laughs> I'm a late bloomer. I had my kiddos later on in life. I, you know, I was 38 yeah. and 40 when I had Harlow and and I, I, I never intended there was no there was no, oh, master plan. No, <laughs> you know, we just decided, um, well, you know, we just, <laughs> you know, New York well. is really an option for us. I just come through 9-11. I was there. And so yeah. New York was feeling a, a bit anxious with newborns for me. Yeah. You know, it's my home. And, you know, we love it there. Yes. Um, uh, in LA, I'd been there for 30 years and I was mm -hmm. kind of a little exhausted of, of that, that thing too. Yeah. And, when we were thinking, you know, it's got to become about them. And so that's my husband. And there's a great, beautiful, thriving um, film industry here in Austin. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, the, and such <clears throat> great folks. And, and he does such amazing work. And we just thought, you know what, this will we'll just, you know, let's be here. And we found this beautiful piece of property that we were we were lucky enough to be stewards of for, for as long as we were. And yeah, we could open the doors and the kids could go run and you hunt for bugs and you go on hikes and you're still on your own property. And, you know, it's just, it was I just it was wonderful, you know? Yeah. I, I know I've seen your, that's why when I see the pictures of your, your farm, oh, the farm, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great place and it, and it kind of recharges. I never intended to not not work, but you know, they're captivating. These kiddos are just captivating. And I, I didn't, get it. I didn't wait that long to yeah. not raise them, you know, right. to not yeah. be here and know yeah. everything about who they are. And, and I'm so in retrospect, you know, cause we're now getting to a point where, you know, we're one is almost 17 and uh, Harlow turns 14 in a couple of weeks. So fun. Wow. I know wow. there, it, it just, you know, you're ready. Uh, now I can, you know, begin to thank think God. 
Yeah, doing some stuff. And, but it, it's been, they're incredible. They inform, they just teach me every day. They're just so kind and loving. And I, I just, I'm so grateful. I, I really am grateful that I had that opportunity. And, you know, absolutely. So, so there was a gap. So I have a, I have a CV gap, as they tell yeah. me. <laughs> well, but you know what's so interesting? I mean, call it a gap, whatever else you want to call it. Or, I, you know, um, to me, a creative is a creative. I sort of had to fall in love with that and identify as that because it was given to me. So I had a lot of like feelings about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cloris was the one who actually really just shepherded me and mentored me <clears throat> into like, no, own it, learn, craft, and get up on stage and, and mm-hmm. fall in love with yourself doing it or don't, you know? And so my, I talk about a late bloomer. God, I, I'm still, I think the best is yet to come. I could be delusional, but no, I, I, don't I, I, I don't think you are. I really don't because I mean, you've, you've just been, you know, putting, getting all your tools, you know, and I think yeah. you're just going to start hitting, hitting your stride and, you know, Same. It, we just happen to have been doing it for a very long time. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. exactly. That's, that's the difference is we're not just starting now. We've yeah. been doing it for a while. And sometimes so Nance, to- I, I want to ask you um, because I, I know that, well, maybe you haven't had this experience. I just feel that you have. Um, I have a few times. <laughs> what is your, what's in that toolbox when you, um, again, we had such a good experience for our first, second, third, fourth, fifth experiences of shows, uh, movies, whatever we did. Mm-hmm. I know that to be true. So what happens when you're working with someone who is not of that ilk, who is either a diva or an asshole or a whatever? Um, what's your mindset when that occurs? How do, how, do you, how do you move through that? Humor. Always humor. Because mm-hmm. it's... It, it, it can cut through so much. Also, you know, I've gone into a few projects where people said, and uh, who are you working with? You know? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. There's a story or a story and a story and a story. And my point is, okay, I, I get that, but that's, I don't even have a relationship with them yet. This is, right. I'm going to craft my own, my own relationship and what that's going to be. You know, right. I can't, I can, you know, you can have an understanding and have that back in there and, you know, see what's what, but, you know, as I wouldn't want somebody to have heard something and come in and prejudge me. And, yes. and then you have to work so hard to try to figure out what is this relationship? Cause it's, there's, there's so many mythical things to it, you know, <laughs> it's somebody yeah. else's opinion or somebody else's relationship or something else that happens. So, you know, in that, in that instance, and you know, on, on one project I can think of in particular, I just, right. because, you know, it's the great equalizer and, and, and if not, then, and you know, someone doesn't have a, a, a really <laughs> good sense of humor. If that <laughs> yes. Then, you know, the thing is, is I'm not there really. It's always a pleasure right. and a surprise. Right. Nice when it works out and you kind of become family in the end, but I'm not there to make friends or to be yeah, family. I'm right. there to do what I was asked to do or what I was privileged enough to, to get to do. Mm-hmm. You, know, the mm-hmm. you want to do this role and whatever this is. And it's just concentrating on that, you know, cause I, I yeah. You know, I don't, I don't need much. I don't need a Same. Fancy anything. I don't need, you know, I, I have never had staff or people around me or, right. like, you know, I, I didn't have an, anybody helping me with the kids. Just me, you know, yeah. just mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when they nap, go to sleep at eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But because it, I just don't need any of that, you know? Yeah. And I love doing I love the work. I just love doing it. Whether you're trying to figure out how to be, how to craft the scene into it, its funniest version, or mm-hmm. if it's heartbreaking, how yeah. to convey that because you need to have, you know, to let people in, you know, and yeah. know people that have experienced this. Let that, and let it, them see themselves in your performance. Exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, and, that's, I love it. Feel less alone. And so just yeah. um, go, go inward and just yes. do what you do. And, yeah. and so besides me, of course, um, who would you like to work with in the future? Gosh. Uh, hmm. 
Do you have like a dream dream scenario of of a list of people besides Ina, of course. Besides Ina, yeah, Ina Garten. That's that's coming in your future, Nance. <laughs> who do who do you who do you say when somebody asks you that? Who who are your? Cool. Good question. I I usually want to get to someone before they're. I mean, this is so morbid of me. I can't help it. I'm a little morbid, but I want to get people before they leave. Do you know what I mean? So I usually look to. It's preferable because they can. <laughs> Seen easier if they're alive. <laughs> if, 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 if they're above ground, but yeah. uh, yes, and not, and not and not of ashes. Yes, yeah. it would be amazing to have a scene partner that has neither of those attributes. But um, so I usually tend to do those. You know, I would like to do a scene with Robert De Niro. I'd like to sit across from Robert De Niro. I have no yeah. bones about that. Uh, awesome. I, you know, there's just some people that I would like to play with. Yeah. Um, before they leave. Um, yeah, again, I think like your general lens and uh, character, you know, I, I was really had wonderful relationships with some old broads that aren't here anymore. And I would like that again as an old broad, um, you know, so those are the names that I usually kind of come up with. Yeah. You know, well, cause they've, they've been, they were our, what we were watching, you know, when we were young. Yeah. And so exactly. You know, just, Exactly. I, I, there's, you know, there's just so many for so many different reasons. Yeah. True that too, too. Yeah. That is, Very it's so hard to, to, to choose just one or two, you know? Um, yeah. I will have to say, I do have to say, I know I texted this to you when I, when I heard the news, but uh, my first feature film uh, co-starred Bonnie Bedelia. Oh. So the fact that you are working with her tickles me to no end. Cause she's one of those, like, you know, She's just she wonderful. She is. She's such a cool cat. And the and the great thing is, is this last series, she's in it too. So we got to we got to play. I never I don't have any scenes with her. But oh. so we but I, I did, you know, we could visit on the set. She flew oh, good. In, in to do her stuff and and she was great. And one day, thank God, they were running long and we sat in up in the, you know, one of our little trailer thingies and uh and we just, we, we talked for like three and a half hours. We hadn't seen each other in a long time, you know? Oh, yes. Um, but I love her and she's, 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 yeah, she's just real, you know? Yes. You know what I mean, in a great way, she's just real. Yes. And, and uh, when you're talking with her, she listens, you know? You can yeah. talk to some people aren't listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And yes, I can, so, unfortunately. Especially these yeah, days. Yeah, Christian. You know? huh? Nobody um, ever- <laughs> where am I? Nobody picked up their phone and checked anything. Uh, you know what I'm love. saying? Oh, that's just, just like, ah, uh, love. Was, um, um, besides the kiddos, um, what or who inspires you right now, currently? Uh, besides Ina? Yeah, besides Ina. Besides we got Ina. it. Uh, <laughs> gosh. We really have to make that happen, Christian. We're doing so it. many people. Um it's so hard, you know, I, I you know, I've, Am I, I think, putting you on the spot? I, I, the, well, you get inspiration in, in different ways, you mm-hmm. know, and from different people. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I mean, even <laughs> this kiddo last night on The Voice who won this magnificent voice, this 15 year old little kid and, and it was just awesome. That's inspiring. You think, oh yes. my God. Yeah. It, go you that's just fantastic you know music is inspiring art is inspiring Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I think I'm always inspired though too because you know quite frankly we're old (laughs) uh you know getting there people like I know I I'm heady I think um (laughs) people um you know like Annette Benning inspire me Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know who oh yeah who just keep this business is 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 yeah, it's got a lot to it. There's so many different layers. And to be able to stand up and say, you know, this is who I am. I'm not playing that game. I'm not doing that thing over there. And mm-hmm. the, and I look like this. And the consistency yeah. of of her her work and her choice and her mm-hmm. overall dignity and class. Yeah. You know, I, I I just those are the words that come to mind when when I think about her and and you know it as I said, there's inspiration just everywhere and people doing so so many amazing things that uh, 
I mean, you can't it's an go exciting to a Broadway time. show without being inspired. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I cry at every, you know, after every show. I, I, I'm, I'm I ridiculous. Yeah, it's, I'm I, so and moved. I miss, that. I miss it so yeah, much. Same. I, and I, my heart is breaking for, for all of these, for, for the whole, you know, people don't often think of the whole, but there's, you know, stage oh. managers and, and, and customers and just yep. set design. you know, I mean, it goes on and on and on oh. and on. Oh yeah. That, you know, are hurting right now. And to think of how the kind of stories they craft and, and give to us is it, such a gift. Eight, eight yeah. nights a week or eight shows a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> my dream. That's my dream. I know. Mine too. New York. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I didn't know that. I'm putting that. I uh, what is? Give me. I'll take it. No, that I put that out. I have. I'm not shy about it. I I tell people all the time. They're like, really, what do you want want to be doing? And I two things. I want my version, whatever that is, of misery. I want that kind of role. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, And eight shows a week. I know, right? On uh, on Broadway, like without question. Those are the two apples. Has misery is. Is Misery been on Broadway? Is it is it a theater? It has. Yeah, it has. And but so, I just meant like when someone says like, is there a role you want to play? No, I, I know. And play- I'm just saying revival. <laughs> oh, yeah. Revival? Well, Lori, Lori Metcalf played her on Broadway with Bruce Willis. That was two years ago. Okay. On Misery. So give it three years and, and it would be great. You, you do you. Because <laughs> you'd be Your great version. at that. You, yeah. you oh my God, yeah. really would be great because there's a fine line when you're watching somebody <laughs> and you know when they've got comedy chops, but they can also, they, they ha- you know that they have uh-huh. that other side. You have seen there. firsthand at how psychotic I can be. So you, you, you among many few people actually have seen it yeah. so, and, and witnessed it. So yeah, yeah, I got don't it in there. She would be great, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Well, he's, yeah, I mean, oh my God. Those, okay, anyway, that coming. was not That's what this coming. was about. Um, so well, I'm excited that you're, I'm excited that you're, you're back. Not that you ever left, but I'm really excited that, um, you know, the break in your are, CV is done or coming yes, to an end. Exactly. We can only hope. We, we can <laughs> oh, no. <save> this. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. But you oh, know, how I think goes. the moment, I think the moment people know that you want it's going to be floodgates. Don't you me, love when, sure. when people ask you, they, 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 and genuine and they're serious in it. And I, and, and I, and I yeah. love that, but they say, you know, the roles you've chosen, you know, and, and, and the career that you've crafted. And you, <laughs> yeah. Four people in our business that get to craft their career. <laughs> it's called the 1%. Us, have to be, you know, go and, 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 and die for a job. And sometimes, that's a job you don't want to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Sometimes that's you a bet. job for the rent. That's right. You bet. You bet. Yeah. But that's I have, I have a few again. things that I'd, I'd like to take off my CV if I, since I'm rewriting it. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Ditto. Ditto. Uh, but no, that's called taking care of yourself and a working actor. I mean, I, I always am so surprised that. And also, you know, I don't know if you, uh, you get this, but I, are you still working? For some reason, that question really bothers me because, you know, yeah, I mean, don't ask, don't tell. I don't know. It's always I I have to get a better mood about it. You do. Here's the thing, though. Honest to God. okay, just like I said, for 18 years, I had nothing. You know, I literally had to download things on my iPad and come back and see if I could I could hook it up to my TV to (laughs) to watch anything about anything. So. There is so much content. There's so many channels. There's so much out there. Yeah. And I think, oh, I'd love to see that. Or I'd love to, but there's not enough time in the day. And so I think if people say something like that, and I get that too, of course, you know, it, it's, I, I don't take it as a slight. People are busy. People have families, people, you know, living here in the middle of the country and watching, you know, you know, I've had friends that have you know, five children that, and they're each doing uh, one's softball, one's volleyball, one's right. like, there's no time. They have no idea what anybody's doing. You know right. what I'm saying? I, actually, I the media thing has made it easier because you could follow them on on one of the, the formats and, right. and do like By that. By the way, it made me so happy when you joined Instagram. I can't even <laughs> express it to you. <laughs> And, and I didn't want to, I, I really, I, know you I don't didn't. even know if I'm, st- I, I'm going to stick. I, I, I don't think I'm very good at it. <laughs> I, I don't even care. Just the fact that for a moment, 
that was like, there, yes, good. Makes me happy. You know, I think of it as a giant scrapbook, you know, and it's just, it's my own scrapbook. And, and then when I have friends, like, you know, watching you and like I said, you know, seeing your pictures and where you are and, 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 you know, Kimmy all the time, she's doing something. Oh, well, come on. Uh, you know, just, uh, Lisa's grandchild. Could you imagine how adorable that? I mean, honestly, it's gorgeous. (laughs) heartbreakingly beautiful. So it's yes. just, that's always fun to, to see, you know, your, your friends and kind of what they're doing, because I don't, I'm, I don't do the, you know, I don't really do, do any other thing. <laughs> so. Same, same. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know that um, I adore you so much. Yeah. Um, I am so grateful that you blessed us with your presence on Mondays with Mindy. I'm so excited. Uh, to see what's next for you. And um, may you and Mark and the girls have the most joyous holiday season and wishing you everything and more for the new year from the bottom of my heart. You're a sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. Thanks for asking me. It was so fun to catch up with you and, and to meet you. And (laughs) hopefully hopefully we can uh, meet up in New York. It's I know we, we almost, we almost got it together there that one time and we were, Oh yes. We had to leave. I think you were flying out, but um. I just, uh, you know, I miss you, my friend, and and you're Same. you're doing great, and you know, um, just so, I forever will be. It will be my privilege, and oh. thank you so very thank much. You. Morn I- again, morn again, and I will text you with my in to Ina, and we're gonna try and make that happen. I'll text you the info. That's right, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, it has been <laughs> such a pleasure to have her one more time, Nancy McKeon. Yay, Nancy. Attracting musicians, artists, dreamers, seekers, and bootleggers since 1787, tucked behind a waterfall along a babbling brook, this Catskills Contemporary Hotel sits just steps away from Woodstock's iconic town center. Its sustainable and conscious design, paired with a nod to local flavors and peerless hospitality, will lead you to embrace a way of life here, drawing you in to live, love, and listen. Woodstock Way Hotel. Head to woodstockway.com or mondayswithmindy.com for more information and to book your reservation today.